so as we begin now to uh, learn bishop, um, you recently, just a couple of days ago, turned 50, your jubilee. <laughs> and, and so as you reflect back and then um, look forward, um, what, what are, what's next for, for Dr. Catherine? What's next? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think my my advocacy maybe was premature mm -hmm. because of circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I think I reached the point, as I said, George Floyd showed me that there's a system out there that can kill you. Mm. And if it killed you, you'd be statistic to the rest of the world. But to your family and your loved ones, it will be devastating. And so I think we need to fight a system that can kill you <laughs> and you become a statistic because this, uh, like there's so much enabling of bad. So that was really my awakening. Mm. And I said it was a little bit premature because um, there are things that we've talked about, maybe usually behind closed doors. Mm. There are things we've talked about in couched diplomatic mm -hmm. language, mm. but really, as you grow older, as you gain more experience, as your eyes open out how the world works, you reach a point where you feel like, um, I think age gives you that, mm. where you feel that somebody who is 25 at the beginning of their career does not have the privilege of saying things that I can't say. Mm. Because like now, okay, what else? What what do I care? <laughs> like what else am I aiming for? Mm. I can if I if I unless something terrible happens, I can be the ED of APHC for the next fifteen years if mm. I wanted to. Mm. I don't want to, but I could if I wanted to. Mm. As long as I'm performing, mm. my position is not threatened mm. by anything. As long as of course mm. as I keep performing. Mm. So but if you're twenty five, mm. You know, there are a lot of people who hold mm. influence over your career, mm. over your your position, over mm. your job, your, mm. your networks. Mm. So you can hold back. Mm. But I don't think I'm at an age where I don't care. Like mm. really, I don't think what's the that can happen. I mm. get fired and then mm. I, if I got fired, I don't think I would starve. Mm. So I have a certain level of privilege mm. with, that comes with age, but mm. also comes with maybe achievement mm. where I need to use that privilege for good. Mm. And so mm. the next few years, I said it was a bit premature, but mm. I think 50 is like it. If it's not 50, then when? Like when mm. I'm 65 and mm. blind, <laughs> I, would, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think so. Mm. So this is it. Mm. Um, yes, we live once mm. and um, this is this is the life. Mm. There's no other. Mm. So I think this is the right thing to do at this age mm. and at this point in my career. Mm. So I think the future is more advocacy, mm. but then also trying to come up with um, the so what? Mm. Because it's one thing to keep on shouting about the mm. broken system. Mm. So I think for me, really, the next few years is more to figure out the mm. so what. The system is broken. Mm. What can I do? Mm. In mm. all the hats I wear, mm. whether it's as an African, as mm. a woman, as a 50 year old, mm. as a leader of an institution, as a researcher, I don't know, whichever mm. hat I wear, what is it that mm. can be done mm. to fix the system? Mm. Mm. I think that will be the next. Mm. That's what's next. Mm. And with your <laughs> remarkable history of being a change maker um, and mentoring many others, I think uh, the shol your shoulder in whose many stand and see a bright future. So that figuring out, I, I strongly believe, will be is, is is important, and many others are relying on it so that then the the future that Africa needs to get to, uh, we get to. So um, uh, I appreciate that you are able to share your story and you're able to take your time. Uh, I don't want to leave anything <laughs> unsaid. So what are your closing remarks? <laughs> oh, God, what have I, it's been a long day, it's been yes. a long story. I don't think I've ever done this, honestly. <laughs> I've done bits and pieces. Mm. And, but um, I don't know, like, what's my final? Yeah, please. Uh, closing remarks. This is you. You've reflected back of a fifty-year period, starting with your origins <laughs> and, and and a long, and nice story of where I am now. Yeah. So please uh, take it down for us. I won't even say anything after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So once uh, there's a, a gentleman who died in a plane crash. Uh, his last name is Monroe. I think most people would know him. He was a an evangelist. Miles and Monroe. 
Max. Miles Monroe. Miles. Mm. Miles Monroe. Mm. And the day after he died, I was reading like the social media like uh, storm that came, and I landed on something he had said, which said that the greatest tragedy is not death, but a life lived without purpose. And it was so striking because it was the day after he died. And I was like, my goodness, this is so powerful that even though he died, at least he died with the belief that death is nothing because he had lived a life of purpose. I don't remember when the exact year, but for me, that was like, goodness, we need to live a life of purpose. So everything that happens, I think I have to ask myself, I don't think it's right that we're here just to be that we're just here to be, like just be, like get a nice job and I don't know what, and get money and eat nice food and live in a nice, you know, a nice house. I don't think that's enough. Mm. So for me, it's that question of what is my purpose in life? And then what can I do to be sure that I actually fulfill that purpose? So I think um, there are other things which said, I think uh, the, the one, the best is, um, I don't remember the exact saying that when you're born and the rest, the second is when you figure out why. I think that's very powerful. So that has been, since that time, actually for me has been like a, that guiding star. Mm. Asking myself, what's my purpose in life? Okay, since I have this purpose, then what? Because it's good to say, okay, I think I'm asked to do X, Y, Z, and then you do nothing about it. So whatever I do really is because I think that that is the purpose for which I was put on this earth. So 50 years, I don't know how many more years I have, but I think for maybe the last 10 or so years, I think I've done what needs to be done. And I have no regrets. If I died today, I think I would have done everything that needed to be done at this point in time. If I don't die, whatever comes next, purpose, I think is what we need to keep in mind always. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Catherine Kimbotogi on DD with Maxi. Cut.